Good Sunday morning to you. I'm Fred Childers. Thanks for joining us for this week in Louisiana politics on your local election headquarters. This is a very special post election edition. Joining me on set here is John Cuvion with JMC Analytics and Polling. Thanks for joining us, John. Good to be here today. We've had a, uh, we had a busy night. Saturday night, we watched the election returns. Uh, obviously, the biggest story here is Governor John Bell Edwards, the Democrat incumbent, will be heading into a runoff with Republican businessman Eddie Responi. Tell us about those the numbers that came in that solidified this. So what's interesting about what happened is really there's been kind of a sea change in Louisiana politics in that not only did you have a healthy 45% turnout with all the votes completed, but the fact that the Republican candidates in the aggregate got 52% of the vote versus the 47% that John Bell Edwards and another Democrat got. So the fact that you have an incumbent governor only getting 47% of the vote, and by the way, he only got 48% of the vote in his home parish of Tangipahoe Parish, which to me is an embarrassment because he carried that parish with 60% four years ago. In fact, throughout the night, you were noticing that some parishes that uh, he carried handily back in 2015, his first run for governor, he wasn't doing so well tonight. One of them was uh, uh, in Calcasieu, I believe. Correct. And the interesting thing about that is talking about how the, I guess, stereotypical party bases have changed, because in the biggest three parishes, East Baton Rouge and Jefferson and Orleans, Governor Edwards carried all three of them with comfortable majorities. But where he lost a lot of support relative to 2015 was in the smaller and mid-sized parishes, where in my opinion, he outperformed the standard Democratic vote four years ago because people thought he was a conservative Democrat. So because he didn't get 50% of the vote, Governor John Bell Edwards, he will now head into a runoff. Yes. Uh, so the, the two Republican challengers, what they got tonight, if that's combined... I mean, theoretically, if, if, if that works out perfectly, they have a shot at beating, or uh, Responi has a shot at beating John Bell Edwards. Correct, especially since President Trump will now uh, have a full-throated endorsement of Responi in the runoff. Now, I would caution your viewers that I don't believe that Governor Edwards is an absolute goner because he did get 47% of the vote, number one, and now that it is him one-on-one -on -one against a Republican and this false narrative that his campaign had peddled about winning with an outside majority is now been dispelled, I think there'll now be some urgency when it comes to Democratic get-out-the-vote efforts come November 16th, so it's going to be a nip-and-tuck race. You feel like Republicans are going to pour, nas on a national level, Republicans are going to pour a lot more money into this race? I do, and Democrats. Because the thing you have to remember is the Democrats certainly don't want to lose their one beachhead in the Deep South. Right. And um, Abraham, um, he, you know, he had a, there were, throughout the night, there were some close calls where it looked like he could have uh, come in second place and headed into the runoff. What, uh, do you remember what the, the final numbers were there? It's 27 percent for Responi. I think it was roughly 27, 23 favoring Responi, about a 50, 000, 40 to 50,000 vote margin. And, you know, the thing that was interesting about that was you're correct that Ralph Abraham did start the night off in the lead, well, excuse me, second place. But you have to remember that those northeastern Louisiana parishes, which were Abraham's strongholds, they always report first. So I knew that as the big south Louisiana parishes were coming in, that Responi would catch him and eventually surpass him, which, of course, is what happened. So, so interesting in this race, um, you see there on screen, we have, uh, you know, Governor Edwards at 47 percent, Responi at 27 percent, and Abraham at 24 percent. Uh, Responi really poured a lot of money into this, into this race, uh, especially with television ads, and he even um, uh, went after his fellow Republican with some uh, negative ads, some criticisms. Yes. Uh, it looks like it has uh, paid off, and he's, he's now in the, the runoff. It paid off, but not as much as you would think, because he did have absolute dominance over Abraham in terms of the statewide air of media campaign. I would have expected, given the sheer dominance he had money-wise, he should have been a 5 to 10 point victor. I do think there was some conservative backlash against the nature of the, some of the attack ads, but the reality was that Ralph Abraham was not running a campaign in 100 percent of Louisiana because he pretty much did not put much into the Baton Rouge and New Orleans media markets till the very end. So basically he was campaigning on half the state. A very gracious uh, Abraham as well, after all of this played out on Saturday night, we heard from him uh, in his concession speech, and he had a little something to say uh, about responding. Let's listen in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 
I've called Eddie, I've given him my congratulations, and I have endorsed him because we still have one task left, and that's to be John Bill Edwards. I've said it before, and I'll say it over and over again. The, the reason Diane and I jumped in this race to begin with is we did just simply did not like where we were as a state, dead last in everything. The only way to fix that is to put somebody else in that position. So we're going to march forward November 16th. We're going to be here from the Republican standpoint, and hopefully we move in a direction that we all know we can be. I'm looking out among the crowd. You're all my friends. You're all my supporters. Again, just a big thanks. Uh, we will continue to serve you in Congress, uh, and we will continue to march forward and do what we know is right and righteous. And uh, again, we'll be at church in the morning with our good pastor and uh, first lady over there. And uh, I would encourage all of you to do the same. So thank you for coming out. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. And John, I don't think uh, you heard in that sound bite there, but uh, I know Abraham uh, did wish Responi well, and it, it sounded as though he was given an endorsement uh, to Responi. And I know the one thing that those two um, candidates agreed on was their desire to do something different. So do you, do you feel like uh, the, the endorsement was sincere from Abraham and that we will see more support from him as we head to November 16th? I do, but from, from a practical standpoint, it would be important for Abraham, uh, Con uh, Eddie Responi, rather, to go the extra mile and get, you know, talk to, have a good conversation with Ralph tomorrow uh, afternoon and get his enthusiastic endorsement. Because the one thing that Responi can ill afford to have is any kind of decline in Republican turnout in Northeast Louisiana because as you may remember from the 2002 Senate runoff when John Cooksey, who was then a congressman from that same area, when he didn't make the runoff and he did not enthusiastically enough support Susie Terrell, she did lose to Mary Landrieu 48 to 52 percent, and part of it was double-digit declines in turnout in those rural parishes. So it is incumbent upon Responi to, you know, kind of have a peace visit with Abraham and get his enthusiastic endorsement. And better yet, when President Trump comes to town, have the two of them at his side with their hands clapped in victory. All right, let's hear from Mr. Responi in his victory speech Saturday night. I would have been out here about three minutes sooner, but they had this guy up in Washington, D.C. just called to congratulate us. <laughs> President Donald Trump is going to help us. He congratulated us. He's going to stay with Louisiana. He's going to make us great like the rest of the country, and he's going to support us. That's wonderful. Let's thank him. Let's go. Well, look, are y'all ready to shake up Louisiana and make it number one in the South? Well, let me start by thanking my family. They have been so supportive, and especially Linda. It's a lot to ask. It's a lot to ask of seven married, beautiful children and 24 perfect grandchildren. But I'm so blessed. And I have many other family members here that have been stepping up to help us as well. And of course, all of you, you supporters. We could not do it without you. Thank you. Thank you. Give yourself an applause and a hand. We have a great team that's worked very hard. This, you know, I'm not a politician. This is the first time I've ever ran for elected office. But we put together a devoted team that worked very hard and congratulate them as well. Thank you. And of course, the Almighty God. That's why we're here. We're here to serve the Lord to do what he asked us to do. We answered his prayers, we answered his requests, and with your prayers, we're gonna win. This is just the first step. We're gonna be the governor of Louisiana, but we're gonna turn this state around. Yeah. 
I'd also like to thank Congressman Ralph Abraham. He called me earlier, very graciously said he's behind us, he's going to support us. I had to tell him that he worked very, very hard, and Linda and I kept him in his, our prayers because the man flew himself all over this state working very hard because he wants to see the change as well. Please keep him in your prayers and thank him as well. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. It all boils down. If you want different results, you got to elect a different kind of governor. And what do we have? You know, we started our company. Jerry and I started our company 30 years ago, and there was three of us in my living room. And you know what? Now, today, we employ almost 4,000 families. We founded that company on treating others like we want to be treated and treating everyone with integrity. That's why we're successful. We're going to do the same thing here. You can start with three and wind up with 4,000 families. You can turn this state around with the right team, the right attitude, and you can shake up this state and make it great again. Thank you. Let's go do it. Right. That's it. I love it. Why is it important to have a job creator as your governor? We're the only state in the United States that's losing jobs. We have to do something different. And what do you do to get something different? You elect a different kind of governor. All right, there you have it. Coming up next, the effort to create a city within the city of St. George. What did the voters have to say about that? We'll have it next on your local election headquarters. Stay with us. All right, welcome back. We're going to switch gears from the candidate-oriented races, John, and talk about an effort in uh, East Baton Rouge uh, that would be the incorporation of St. George into a city. This has been a long time coming. You see uh, there on the screen the result of Saturday night's vote. 54% voted yes, 
46 percent voted no. I noticed throughout the night, John, this was a very close race, one that uh, you weren't confident to call early on. Uh, that's how close it was pretty right. much all night long. So, and in, in, even in the end here, that's still a fairly close race. And you know, the interesting thing about it, number one, the fact that the race was as close as it was, and part of my lack of comfort in calling it was that you had a very heavy Republican early vote from St. George, yet the early vote was not that strongly in favor of St. George. George. So that to me is kind of a cautionary note because what had happened was they revised the district lines of St. George between the unsuccessful petition attempt the first time and the successful attempt this time where the black population of St. George Part 1 was 23 percent and St. George Part 2 was 12 percent. In other words, had the election been held under the old district lines, it most likely would have lost. But the other thing that was interesting too, uh, besides the fact that it did narrowly pass, even though a win is a win is a win, the fact that you had voter turnout nearly 60% in the proposed incorporation area, that kind of turnout for a non-presidential election is virtually unheard of. All right. Talk about the supporters, how much work they did in making sure that they got out their message. Oh, they definitely, they definitely hit on all cylinders because when I was looking at the early vote within the St. George area, I was seeing early voting turnout roughly three times higher than it was in a comparable area in 2015. You just don't have that kind of increase in early voting turnout without an external event which in this case, of course, was St. George. Okay, so, uh, and I'm told we have an, an interview with some of those uh, pro-St. George organizers. Let's listen to this. Somebody in this parish and outside of this parish said we couldn't do it. They were opposed to us. They told us all the things we couldn't do and why we shouldn't do them. And guess what? Over 16,000 people said, I want a new city. I want something different. <laughs> to President Broom. It's been a hard, hard, hard campaign. We have fought, we have said some probably hateful things we probably regret, or maybe not. Uh, at this point though, it's time for us to sit down. It's time for us to start having some conversations. It's time to start talking about all those things you used to tell us were premature, because guess what? They're not, they're not premature anymore. All right, and that was the attorney for that movement, and uh, you heard him talking specifically about Mayor Broom, so let's listen to what she had to say about it. Well, first of all, let me say it has been uh, my goal and uh, uh, my consistency to reach out to all the citizens of this uh, great city and great parish that I have the privilege of serving as Mayor President. And so I am going to uh, continue to work to unify the citizenry around common goals uh, and shared visions that we have. Uh, it will be a process before any incorporation takes place. And so we will look at those steps. Uh, uh, unfortunately, everyone did not get an opportunity to vote on this issue. Uh, a small section carved out a group of individuals uh, had the opportunity to vote. Nevertheless, I represent those individuals as I do other citizens throughout the parish. So we'll take it one step at a time and go through the uh, process of what has to take place. And so you mentioned those shared goals, common goals that people across the parish um, in both Baton Rouge and what would be City of St. George have. Uh, what, in your view, are those shared goals? Well, for example, we've been working tirelessly on improving drainage in our community. We've got millions of dollars now dedicated to our five tributaries, to our stormwater master plan. We've got MOVE EBR, 30% of those projects are in that quarter. And so we're making an impact throughout the uh, parish. And goals of uh, drainage and water management, drainage improvement, traffic, transportation, uh, safety, all of those are shared goals that we have. And so I have been working on those. We have been making some uh, uh, tremendous strides in those areas. And so I'm going to stay focused on the goals at hand that impact everyone as we work through this process. Yeah, certainly. And what we've seen over the course of tonight on uh, many different races, we've had um, the, the sides who were uh, less lucky, less fortunate tonight, giving their calls uh, to the winners in, in these races. Um, what have, has your relationship been tonight or just so far with 
the supporters of the St. George movement? I have, not had, I have not had a conversation with the supporters, but I've always said from day one, I uh, represent the individuals in uh, that area. That was not my goal, to have a breakaway city, and uh, certainly um, it impacts the entire city and parish. It was uh, my desire, of course, that everyone would have an opportunity to vote on such an impactful issue. Nevertheless, I still represent uh, those citizens, and I will do it to my utmost, like I represent all of the citizens of this city and parish. Certainly, and so uh, obviously one of the reasons we're here and talking um, where we are, um, your support of Governor John Bell Edwards in his second to bid for a second term. Of course, now that goes to a runoff. Um, so in that sense, what brings you here tonight to support the governor? Well, of course, I have uh, been a supporter of the governor from uh, day one, uh, four years ago. And as mayor, he has certainly been a consistent and constant supporter of the capital region, uh, has aided us in uh, times where we needed assistance. Uh, for example, most recently in helping us with our our uh, money for the matching funds for our drainage projects and so uh, I certainly believe that he has moved our state uh, forward and I definitely appreciate the relationship uh, that we have as uh, uh, the governor and mayor of the uh, governor of the state and mayor of the capital city. Certainly and I believe that was there an overlap as far as you and him serving in the legislature as well? Yes we did serve in the legislature at the same time and he ended up staying at the Capitol and I ended up coming to City Hall. It's a mutual bond there. That's right. That's All right, right. Mayor, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Welcome back. Real quick, we're going to run through some of the more notable races from Saturday night. There you see the Secretary of State's race, 41% for incumbent Ardwin, and he is going into a runoff with Collins Green up, 34%. Now on to the next race, Attorney General. You see Landry there with 66% of the vote, Jackson Jr. with 34%. Next is the lieutenant governor's race. You see Nungesser there with 68% of the vote to Jones's 32%. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back, and thank you, John, for your wonderful analysis, as always. We really appreciate it. Thank you for watching This Week in Louisiana Politics. I'll see you next Sunday right here on your local election headquarters.